more. Get my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive. Six, seven, eight, feeling great. Nine, I'm gonna shine. Life is good. I'm doing fine. Ten, gonna do it right and do it again. Yeah. I look into the sky with all the beautiful color, but there's more than just for me, so gonna share it with another. I got to show, to give, let out. I want to sing and shout. Take a look and see a beautiful morning that turns into a beautiful evening, and together make a beautiful life. And if you wanna see, then come along with me. That's right. Hello and welcome to Experience Michiana. I'm Irish Dave. As you can see, it's a really tough assignment that they have me on this week. You're going to find out later in the show what exactly I'm doing. And it is all for a very good cause. No, seriously, it really is. We're going to find out about the Fire Arts Exhibition, their latest exhibition that's going on. But first, Courtney went to the DeBartolo to find out about their latest programs. Well, we are talking performing arts once again. And here at the DeBartolo for Performing Arts Center at Notre Dame, we have some amazing things that are happening on both on the stage as well as in the cinema. And I have some wonderful guests here who are going to share a bit of what is going on. This presenting series is already happening. Some of it is already going on. In the cinema, I know you were showing me this list of everything that you have going on. And I said, is this the list of, you know, the next couple of months? And this is just in February. Mm -hmm. This is incredible. Tell yeah. us more about we're what's We're busy bees. We're busy bees. Uh, so we have a couple of series that are going on. Okay. Both a capsule series for seven weeks and one that's throughout the semester. Uh, the first is in conjunction with Dr. Ted Barron's class. He's doing a retrospective of American independent cinema. Oh, which okay. is a tricky thing to define, uh, but looking at you know films that are made outside of the studio system and how they develop throughout the, to the century. So we have Killer of Sheep, a very classic uh, L.A. Rebellion film, if you're looking at African-American cinema and the history of it. Girlfriends, a movie made... Uh, uh, out of New York in the early 80s, and then Chan is Missing, which is one of the first pictures uh, made by an Asian American that an Asian American that really gets grounding in America. And he went on to direct the Joy Luck Club and some other films. But this is from about 40 years ago, and That's it's amazing. really a stalwart of uh, both independent and Asian American cinema. And I love that, you know, you're including the professors and things like that. How does that work? How do you collaborate with the staff here to coordinate the schedule for the cinema shows? Uh, well, it's a combination of taking the things that are already in the pantry, the classes that are being taught, and taking those screenings and putting them outward facing so that the community can take that education that our students are having along with them. Yeah. And then also, you know, looking at research interests, what they might be writing about, what's hot right now in contemporary topics, and kind of melding the two where it's possible. And uh, we have another series uh, that does exactly that. Okay. And that's uh, contemporary French cinema. And this is in conjunction uh -huh. with Romance Languages, particularly the French uh, department. And thanks to a grant from the French consulate, we have films that we're able to bring in oh, uh, that tend to be newer releases, but are going to be pretty radically eclectic in terms of their topics, their genres, and generally the approach to telling stories. Uh, coming up, we have The Monopoly of Violence, a documentary film, and A Tale of Love and Desire, which is a narrative film, uh, both kind of telling uh, undertold stories okay. uh, that are kind of simmering underneath French cinema. And then lastly, a classic film, Mr. Klein from the 70s, uh, that looks at some of the, the impact of the Holocaust that it has okay. uh, throughout France. So for the French cinema specifically, are those all in French? Do I need to know French to, <laughs> to see those? Or are there subtitles? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we keep the subtitles on. Okay. And so, uh, yes, and all of our discussions that we have after these films are in English. Okay. <laughs> um, you might have some French accents, but no, we're we're in we're in English, and that's the the lingua franca of the, of the conversation. <laughs> sure. After it. And and for all of the cinema shows, are you doing more of a Q and A after all of them, or just some of them in particular? So these series and classes, that's what we're doing. Okay. And I should note should have noted. Uh, so American Independent Cinema, so that's Wednesday at five fifteen, and Contemporary French Cinema is Thursdays at six thirty. And it's two dollars to get in. We oh, have readings. That's so reasonable. Yeah, yeah, we for those series, and uh, so please, uh, if you have any questions on those, uh, you can contact us. Perfect, perfect. And then you also have the Notre Dame Forum happening too. Yeah, so this is the free series in conjunction with the president, uh, the office of the president here at Notre Dame. Right. Uh, they have a year-long conversation that's occurring on War and Peace, and we have films, uh, a film series that tackle those same questions. Uh, and we have coming up for Sama. Uh, a documentary film uh, about the Syrian uh, war 
and the difficulties there. And then lastly, Rithi Pond's um, like masterpiece uh, about the Khmer Rouge and genocide in Cambodia called The Missing Picture. And I want to talk to you too about some of the different things yeah. that you have coming up. Your presenting series has already began and that started kind of back in the fall. Correct. So the presenting series lasts the academic year. We start okay. in the fall Perfect. and we end in late April or May, depending on uh, which weekend we add, uh, we end on. So we started actually the second half of this or the spring semester just a few weeks ago. Uh, we had Uzima, a local yes, dance and drumming. Kelly. Exactly, <laughs> Kelly uh, Berger here. Um, and then we had a couple other performances. Um, and then I'm going to talk today about from now through spring break. Perfect. Uh, and so in, uh, on February 17th on Friday, we have Iris Dement. Um, Iris Dement was big in the 90s. She was, uh, she's a folk singer, roots, sort of gospel Americana singer-songwriter. Uh -huh. Um, I sort of recognized her because they used her music for the theme uh, to the HBO series, The Leftovers. Okay. But my colleagues who really grew up in the okay. 90s really knew Iris Dement and okay. is, are really excited that she's coming. <laughs> um, what's special about this though, and the real reason we're bringing her is um, the Institute for Advanced Studies director, Megan Sullivan, is a philosophy professor and has followed the uh, songwriting and philosophical philosophical approach to the music that Iris Dement has. Okay. Um, and so in this concert, Iris will perform for about an hour and then Megan's going to join her on stage and have a Q&A just to talk about, you know, her approach to songwriting oh, and the philosophy wonderful. of her songwriting. Um, and Iris being a pretty private person, we're, we're pretty um, excited that she agreed to this. Yeah, like an exclusive. Yeah, with absolutely. Her. That's incredible. Yeah. Yes. Amazing. And then you have other stuff going on too. I love that you have a variety of arts. You know, how does that go into play of what you're planning for the presenting series? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, within this building, we have five different theaters and each theater is designed specifically for a certain type of art form. For example, in the DCO theater here, we, you know, nearly exclusively only present theater and okay. um, dance because okay. the, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of designed for that. In the concert hall, we primarily uh, focus on music. So I, I take a look at those three genres, music, dance, and theater. Within music, we sort of, we tie in academically. So there's a lot of classical music and jazz music to connect with the music sure. department. In the theater, we typically, you know, present theater that um, has connections to what the faculty are, are teaching. Um, and s same with dance, you know, Notre Dame doesn't have a dance department, but we work very closely with our uh, friends over at St. Mary's. Um, we take often take those dancers into the local community. We often go to Clay High School as the arts magnet to do master classes. Um, and so that's just sort of the, the broad sense of how we, uh, you know, program the season. And then we want a little of everything. So yeah. we, work with the, we work with the faculty. We want to make sure it's a broad sort of sampling of what the arts have to offer. So what else do you have coming up next? For yes, we have Kendrick Oliver and the New Life Jazz Orchestra. Um, this is a 20 person big band, jazz band. Oh, uh, I love big bands. Really <laughs> keeping Count Basie alive. Kendrick Oliver is uh, both the arranger and a composer, but he's also a tuba player, so okay. he's a tubist. Okay. Uh, but what's really exciting is we're partnering with the Collegiate Jazz Fest. Uh, the Jazz Fest is happening here Great. on uh, Friday the 24th of February, okay. and then on the 25th, uh, Kendrick Oliver and the Jazz Orchestra will play. They are acting as clinicians for the Jazz Festival. So okay. the Jazz Festival is, uh, collegiate jazz bands from around the uh, area. Um, they will, you know, work with those students and then have a concert on Saturday night. Perfect. And then you also have Pride and Prejudice coming up. You have an organ performance coming up. Exactly. And then even the ballet too. Exactly. So Alonzo King Lines Ballet is based in San Francisco. Alonzo King uh, was born in, in Georgia. His family has roots to the Martin Luther King family okay. and Malcolm X. So he sort of takes that growing up during the civil rights movement and really sort of uh, infuses that into his contemporary contemporary ballet. Uh, they're performing a piece called Deep River, which is a new work uh, composed for them based on African-American spirituals. Wonderful. It's a 65 minute evening length work without an intermission. Uh, so it's, it's beautiful dancers and beautiful choreography. Wonderful. And I know you, uh, you have a few more things that you wanted to mention about the films that are coming up as well too. The new cinema series is coming up and I know I'm going to mess that up. The Finkel Funder. Yeah, you nailed I that. You nailed that. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, just a quick note um, that uh, we have a, a documentary that is pretty avant-garde in its form and telling uh, of trans stories called Framing Agnes. Mm -hmm. um, another Oscar-nominated Oscar film, Tar, 
really known for being Kate Blanchett's like plinth on which she's able to kind of do the Kate Blanchett thing. Uh, and then we have a series of all of the films that are nominated for shorts. So there are Oscars for short documentary, uh, animated short, and live action short. We have a series that lets you see all of those. So oh, if great. you're a completist, if you like to know everything that's been nominated to really win your pool, uh, that's a great <laughs> uh, weekend to come in and see all those. That might be something me and my husband have to do. <laughs> yeah, it's a great. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, so that's a, the last weekend in February. Okay. Uh, and then for the kids' films, just to know, it's a dollar to get in, a dollar for popcorn, a dollar for pop, and it's Sunday at 1 p.m. Wonderful. We have coming up James and the Giant Peach and Daddy Daycare to round out the month. That's awesome. Now, where can people get all the information and figure out how to buy their tickets and all that good stuff? They can go ahead. They can go to performingarts.nd.edu okay. to find out all about all about all of the films and performances and all of the other things that take place here. Sure. The theater department has a musical coming up in a couple weeks. The Notre Dame Symphony is performing in a couple weeks. So we have hundreds of events a year. So there's something for everyone. So that's performingarts.nd.edu. Such a wonderful thing that we have here in our community, really. It, you know, it just locally here, such a variety, so diverse, so many options. I hope everyone gets a chance to come and see some shows here in the next month or more. Thank you guys. Thanks. Thanks. So once again, I'm in a place that it's my first being here, and that's what Experience Michiana does for me. I've never been in Ivy Tech. I have been with Sarah from Unity Gardens quite a bit, uh, recently, of course, which are edgy veggie, which we're very excited about. So tell me about Perfect Pairings. What is this? Perfect Pairings just continues our uh, theme of connecting our community to get fresh, healthy food. Mm -hmm. But in this case, we take the expertise of Ivy Tech, um, the hospitality department, their expertise is citywide liquors, and we do a pairing event. So this event, guests will come, they will have four stations, a sweet and savory, each paired with a different wine, yep. a sweet and savory, each paired with a special beer. I like it. Today is the day that, you know, the behind the scenes yep. tasting, and then all the guests will be able to enjoy that at the beautiful Loft Hotel. So the event is actually on February 23rd. I know that it's a very important event for Unity Gardens in terms of your operations throughout the year. Like the more people can support this event, then the more good you can do in the community. So you really want people to get out and support this. Absolutely. It's a wonderful event. It's a great um, time to just engage not only with your palate, but with other people in the community yeah. dedicated to helping our food grow. I mean, not just in the ground. Yeah. But we're churning out chefs at Ivy Tech and you're know, <laughs> yeah. creating our own culinary experience in this community. So how did you get connected to Ivy Tech since we're here today? Well, it's interesting. From the very beginning, Ivy Tech engages their students in volunteerism, oh. service, et cetera. And so with the whole farm to fork and locally grown food movement going, Chef Brent and Chef Chris, uh, Chef Patsy too, have all been super involved with getting their students out to the garden, mm -hmm. seeing things grow in the ground, picking them, making wonderful things, and helping us with our fundraisers. I love it. And then with City Liquors, how did that come along? So Citywide Liquors, maybe many people don't know, but Errol and Tim not only are um, you know, have Citywide Liquors where we can all purchase any kind of beverages, but they have expertise. I mean, they really know how to pair flavors mm -hmm. in a whole different way. So when you want that specialty item or something, you know, to host that really pops, yep. they are the people that can help you. And so um, in that way, they dedicate back to their community. So they are always behind our events of this nature. All right. So February 23rd, the Aloft Hotel. Where can people actually get tickets for this? That's they can get tickets on um, the Unity Gardens website, www.theunitygardens.org. Um, those are on our Facebook page. We're highlighting them on Instagram. They can actually call into the office. We have them at the South Bend Farmers Market and at our Welcome Center. All right, so you talk about these great chefs. I see them just over here. They're actually doing the pairings right now. So I think we need to go over and actually find out what they're doing so I can actually taste them. Oh, I can't wait to try. <laughs> All right, awesome. So the fun part is starting now where we actually get to taste some of the pairings from the food to some of the drink. And the first one I've already tasted with the cider, which went down really well. So uh, Chef, first of all, how did you get involved with Unity Gardens in the first place? Well, um, when, when they first started, Sarah came to us and said, you know, we want to um, partner with some of the culinary community to, to get uh, our name out there and do our, get our food together, our, get our food used in restaurants. Mm -hmm. So um, when she asked us to do that, we first started with her uh, fall harvest event. 
and then um, she eventually got me on her board of directors <laughs> and uh, she roped you in yeah roped me in <laughs> and it's a great cause and we take students out to the garden yeah so that they can see what it's what how much work it takes to grow this food yeah. so that they have a better respect of the food that they're preparing so with this dish um, this is a curry dish what exactly is this so it's basically it's sweet potatoes it has um, dino kale um, and uh, um, coconut cream yep. and some French curry and then it has on uh, chickpeas and then we just cook all that together puree it and then we top it with a little bit of fresh lime juice nice. there's a little bit of toasted chickpea on top yeah. and some uh, um, radish lot. market microgreens. There's a lot went into this. Yes. So this is obviously just the starter. What else have we got going on for the meal? So we pair two savories and two sweets um, to a savory with a beer and or a cider yeah. and, and a wine and then a sweet with a beer mm -hmm. or a cider or, and a wine. This is going to be a tough afternoon for right. me being here. Right. This is this is really a hard assignment that they it sent is. me on today. So so I'm here with Chris, Brad Pitt's uh, better looking cousin. How are you doing? <laughs> Thanks. Good. Now, I, I like because on the side I see the, the Union Jack here. Yeah. Which, because you were actually born in the UK. I was, I was born in Essex County. All right, but your accent is completely different. I was only three when we moved here. Okay, okay, so you didn't, you didn't hang on to it, but I like it, I was wondering. So, it's a hard day, uh, obviously, here at the office, so tell me a little bit, uh, first of all, what's your role here? So, my current role is Program Chair for the Hospitality Administration Department here at Ivy Tech. And you specialize in the best part of the meal. Yeah, I'm the dessert guy, <laughs> so I like to do pastry, I went to school for it, it's my, my training. That's, and, and, and this is what's being paired with it, which I know we'll talk to Citywide Liquors a little bit more about why yeah, they paired it. So this is a baba o rum, and it's a traditional uh, yeast-raised dough. Uh, usually it's done with raisins, but we changed it up for uh, chocolate chips, and then we soaked it in a coffee mocha sauce. And, and any idea why they paired this? I mean... So we were actually messing with it in our own thought process of something like a stout, something heavy to go with this. Yeah. There's an added challenge for the guys at Citywide because we did alcohol in this. So alcohol and alcohol, yeah. how do you pair? But um, I think they nailed it pretty good. Now this isn't the only one. You've got uh, another one yeah. here as well. So. Yep. Um, so this guy is, uh, this is a little bit more refined. Um, we did a vanilla and rose flavored cremeau. Oh, and nice. rose, you have to be really careful because if you have too much, it can taste kind of soapy. Yep. So we have vanilla and rose. We did a pomegranate uh, gel layer, great little um, tweel uh, that looks like a stick, candied rose petal, and some pistachio pieces. Oh, yeah. I haven't tried that yet. Nope, this is to come still. Uh, I like it. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, so I'm here with Errol, who's making everyone really happy this afternoon because you're from Citywide Liquors. You're the owner of Citywide Liquors, yes, which is really great. cool. I love how um, your name has come up many times with nonprofits in the area. Giving back is a big part of what you do, right? Yeah, certainly. So uh, we're locally owned and operated. And I mean, there's just a ton of good community events going on in this area, and we just love supporting them and kind of feel pretty entwined with this community and yeah. um, help when we can, you know. There's so why specifically Unity Gardens then for perfect pairings? So we've been partnering with Unity Gardens for five, six years now with this perfect pairings event. Uh, Sarah Stewart, who runs Unity Gardens, is just fantastic. She does a really good job, uh, A, reaching out, but I think she's a great resource for the community, that what they do with uh, providing community gardens is just something that we feel strongly about supporting. and. Uh, it's also a very fun event to be able to partner, you know, wine with mm -hmm. the food that they're doing at Ivy Tech. So, yeah. Where do you even start? Like, if anyone's ever gone into one of your stores, it's just like so much in there. Yeah. Like, how do you even know where to start when, when, with pairings? Well, I would encourage people to come into our store and talk with, you know, we have a lot of knowledgeable staff on, on yeah. the floor. So, um, yeah, come in and talk to us about your menu and what you're looking to do, and we can walk you through a pairing. Um, you know, it just comes with experience. We've got a lot of people that have been doing it for a long time, and yeah. that's, that's just, yeah. All right, well, hey, thank you so much for thank chatting you. with us. Uh, the event is on February 23rd, the Loft Hotel. Don't forget, as Sarah mentioned earlier on the show, you can go to their website to get tickets. They've got tickets at the South Bend Farmer's Market, a bunch of different places. You can just drop into Unity Gardens. And of course, uh, not only do you get to go along to a great event, but you get to support Unity Gardens and all the work they do all year round.
We are talking arts once again, and here at Fire Arts, there is a phenomenal show that you have here, and we actually have the artist. I'm so excited. Val is the artist here for Pandora's Box Opened. This is an incredible display, and as we walked in here today, it really catches your eye. What is the story behind it? Um, well, I've always been fascinated by the sphere. Okay. That, that is like the perfect shape in the whole universe. Yeah. There's so many round things in our world, and I focus on the microscopic. The okay. things you can't see with the naked eye. Great. Yeah. So most of these are either uh, viruses or bacteria or parasites. And so I've, um, I've made a bunch of nasty <laughs> things. <laughs> Into beautiful things. They, they, they are beautiful, um, at least in my eyes. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to um, let the world know that if you look closely enough, you can see beauty even in viruses. And you know, this is one that we, we were talking about before yes. we started to, the coronavirus. And there's a backstory behind this. Yes. I had seen this in a journal okay. way before the pandemic hit. And I looked at it and I said, ooh, I like that. I'm going to make it. Uh -huh. So I did. I, I fashioned it in clay. And the process is you bisque fire it. And then okay. you glaze it. And then it's glaze fired. And then you have a piece. So I, I made it. It got bisque fired. And I went on vacation. Uh -huh. And when I came back, everything was shut down. The, and they, then it and was they, the pandemic. <laughs> and then they said, oh, no, it's just two weeks. It'll be two weeks. And then that went into two months, which went into six, eight months, until I finally was able to get back in the studio and glaze it. So, so everyone knows it was Val's fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm yeah, just yeah, teasing yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. But that's amazing that you know how you interpret it, too. And you know, there's, there's a variety of interpretation here. Now, some of these are actually more in tune to what the virus actually is under the microscope. Right. Talk right. about that. Um, well, a lot of the pieces, I, I model them on micrographs. Okay. And so the electron uh, picture is often put in textbooks, et cetera. Yeah. And so when I s look through a textbook and I see something and I go, oh, I can do that. Yeah. And so I make them uh, based on what I see in those micrographs. So can you show us one of them, like how, um, how it compares to? Well, Look at that. And you can see kind of that. Uh, the zigzag. The zigzag, absolutely, yeah. and how you've translated into right. the so, art piece. So a lot of these are, are based on actual pictures of viruses. Viruses. Or, or computer generated okay. pictures of viruses. Now you have experience. You know, what, what goes into that? You obviously have done some research to get to this point. Well, I. I I'm a veterinary technician, okay, and I'm a laboratory animal technologist. So I've worked in research and in uh, fields where I come across bacteria and viruses yeah. and parasites, um, and that's always been an interest. And what I see under the microscope has always been fascinating. Yeah. So this is uh, the result of years of fascination. It's wonderful, and you've done some other pieces in uh, before too. Maybe not necessarily viruses, but what were some of the other ones well, that you've done um, in the past too? Like over here, I have uh, roundworms. <laughs> That's what it I looks know, like. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, in the back, I have some uh, tapeworms. Uh, okay. Back there. Uh huh. And uh, of course, we have vermin. Uh, everybody's favorite. And I favorite. hope you can zoom in and see these a bit. They're actually tiny mice. Yes. There's just a, a ball of mice. And there's other stuff that you have here, too. I want to take a look at some of the ones over here, too. Okay. This one really is intriguing to me. This is bacteria? Yes, uh, rods and uh, cocci that are bacteria. And I'll show the back of this, too. So that, that's kind of the imagery. Yeah, that's uh, from the rods. That is so cool. And now you, uh, obviously the show is open here at Fire Arts, mm -hmm. um, but you have a special talk that's going to be coming up too. Yes, the uh, first Friday in March, okay. uh, March 3rd, uh, I'm going to be giving a talk about my process and how I make them um, and, and what inspires me to do it um, here at Fire Arts. You've done such a phenomenal job. There's so many interesting pieces <laughs> here. I just love them, and I hope everyone gets a chance to come in and I check hope this so out, too. too. I hope so, too. Well, I know there's other events coming up at, here at Fire Arts, and we're going to talk more about that. 
Now, Julie, you're one of the founding members here at Fire Arts, so you've been around a while, and this is really exciting. You guys are having an amazing show coming up that people can contribute to, The Vernal Reawakening. Tell us more about it. Okay, well, we're happy to uh, have the return of our, our annual juried show, and Vernal Reawakening, it kind of goes with uh, rebirth, reawakening, yeah. renew, and after coming out of the pandemic, that's kind of what we're doing here at Fire Arts. And uh, we're happy to uh, reintroduce this show. And um, it can, artists can apply for this. Okay. Um, and is that local artists, regional? Where are you accepting artists work from? Um, regional, the Michiana area. Okay. Although we've had some, we've had some people uh, enter uh, as far south as Indianapolis. Oh, wow. So it's, um, it's however, you know, they get that information. Absolutely. And what kind of art are you accepting? Is there a different variety, ceramics? Um, 3D art, okay. uh, you know, clay, bronze, uh, resin, uh, fiber arts. Okay. Um, paper mache even. You know. Oh, yeah. Any, anything three-dimensional um, will be acceptable. And then how can people get more information about how to submit their art? Well, uh, go to the Fire Arts website and under uh, events and shows, and we have the, all the information and the fillable PDF uh, uh, form that they form, can do. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, so that okay. they can go there. And uh, starting now through uh, March 4th, they uh -huh. can... Uh, Submit their submit artwork. Their okay, artwork. so they have a couple weeks to mm -hmm. get that done to submit it. And then are you having any special events coming up to showcase all of that? Oh, well, yes. Uh, the first Friday in April will be the opening of the okay, show. Great. And at that point, uh, uh, during that time, we will be awarding um, awards okay. for uh, first, second, and third place. Oh, great. Um, and then uh, after the show opens, uh, people can come in and vote for the piece that they like best. Great. So then the first uh, Friday in May, we'll have uh, the award for People's Choice Award. So it sounds like you guys are going to be back open for First Fridays in downtown South Bend, though? Yes. I'm yes. so excited because we've been to those in, in years past, and we always love to swing by here at the Fire Arts. So I'm really excited that you guys are open again for that. Yeah, yeah. We're really excited that things are kind of getting back to normal. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, hope everyone can come out and check out the shows that are coming up here at the Fire Arts in South Bend. So I hope you enjoyed this week's show from the DeBartolo to Perfect Pairings and also Fire Arts exhibition that is going on. Until next week on Experience Michiana, don't forget if there's something that you think we should experience, just go to our Facebook page, search for Experience Michiana, send us a message on there, and you never know, your suggestion might be on next week's show. See ya. Experience Michiana is made possible in part by the Community Foundation of St. Joseph County and the Indiana Arts Commission, which receives support from the state of Indiana and the National Endowment for the Arts. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.